I want you to pay attention. There is a secret to answered prayer. Please listen. Give us James, please. James 4. We'll read from verse 1 to 3. Cain and Abel offered sacrifices. But the sacrifice of Cain was rejected. And the sacrifice of Abel rose up to the heavens. And the Bible says God had respect for the sacrifice of Abel. And Cain was angry. And God said, if you do it correctly, if you do it correctly, there is a pattern. James 4 verse 1, we are reading down to 3. From whence cometh war and fightings among you? Come they not hence even from the loss that war in your members? Verse 2. Ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. And ye cannot obtain. Ye fight and war. Now read the remaining part. One to read. Yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Verse 3. Ye ask. And ye receive not. Why? Because ye ask amiss. Now listen, the word amiss here is out of pattern. Out of pattern. You are asking. You are praying. But there is a formula. There is a path that leads the request of a man to the throne of heaven. And this is what I want to show you. Let me tell you, your prayer life will be remarkably blessed. There is a way you pray that brings answers. There is a way you pray that will command the attention of heaven. If you don't know this, you can pray and feel spiritual and spit saliva from morning till night and not get any results. The prayer meetings in many ministries are poorly attended by because those who lead the prayers do not know what they are doing. There is an art of war. It says with wise counsel, make war. I want to show you four keys, four mysteries in the spirit that have helped my prayer life. I tell you, you will command results. You will command the attention of heaven if you learn this mystery. Are we together? Don't let anyone fool you that God answers every prayer. No. No. Hagar prayed. Her son cried. Both of them were talking to God. Only the prayer of Ishmael got to heaven. The Bible says, and God heard the cry of the young lad. He did not hear the lamentation of Hagar. Are we together? Another fact you must realize is that your tears touches God, but it does not move God. Uh -uh. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched, not moved with the feelings of our infirmities. He is touched. He sympathizes with us. But if God is to take any action on your behalf, it must be according to his pattern. Because he has exalted his word even above his name. Are we together? Pray one minute violently. Open my eyes. As these mysteries come, oh God, may they not just be information. He prayed the first time. Putting his head beneath his knees. And he cried and travailed. Let me tell you. The kind of prayer that touches heaven is the kind of prayer where you pray and forget who is by your side. You're not looking at makeup or suits or conscious of whether I'm sweating. No, no, no. It must be heartfelt from the depth of your spirit. Are we together? Hannah kept crying every time at Shiloh. But a time came, she prayed a heartfelt prayer. The Bible says before the altar, she poured her soul to a point that Eli the prophet said, Why is this woman drunk? How can you come to the altar drunk? And he said, My Lord, I am not drunk. But a woman that is pouring her soul before God. And the Spirit of God spoke through the prophet. Let me tell you something. The kind of prayer that shakes heaven is prayer that is heartfelt. The way a lot of believers pray, you will know that you do not expect an answer. Are we together? Yeah. You pray with all your heart. The Bible says Jesus prayed at Gethsemane. It was so heartfelt. His sweat was like drops of blood. Same prayer without changing it three times. And he sustained strength from heaven and was ready for the cross. Are we together? Are you ready to pray? 
as I mentioned the king will pray and at the end of the fourth year I will give us some prayer requests and we will pray heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer when we say pray you see a lot of people strolling around chewing gums huh? you see that kind of prayer let me tell you something I'm not being religious with you there is a law you are contending against forces it's like an aeroplane attempting to ride it must move and the law of aerodynamics must sustain capacity to overcome the law of gravity the flesh has its encumbrances and the moment you begin to pray the flesh will exert a weight upon you but it takes power everybody say power as you generate power in the spirit it's like a flight your flesh is weak you are feeling sleepy but you understand the law of spiritual superiority that as it is in the spirit so it will manifest your spirit is strong but the bible says the flesh is weak it's up to you to yield to the weakness of the flesh and not pray or keep praying you don't receive strength to continue praying it is in the prayer all of a sudden when your flesh is weak have you prayed to a point that you did not even expect you had strength for 10 minutes? Keep praying. As you keep praying, you are weak. The devil keeps sending all kinds of thoughts in your mind. Just keep praying. The secret is to continue. I tell you, there is an escape velocity in the spirit. There is a level you will get to that it will no longer be your flesh. At that level, the spirit of God takes over. Lift your voice and pray. Blast in tongues. A heartfelt prayer. Walk around. Don't just and prayer activates the operation of that dimension. He is called the judge. Are we together? I want to teach you the legal dimension of prayer. The key to effective prayer, the kind of petition and supplication that will touch heaven, is the kind that must be done in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the access code to the throne room. The access code, the mystery that opens the gates of the throne room is the name of Jesus. John 14, quickly please. John 14 verse 13. The name of Jesus is the access code. There is no other name that can open the heavens. It says, and I, give us in, in um, um, King James, King James. It says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in your name, in the name of a ministry, it says, whatsoever ye shall ask, for as long as you do it in my name, it says, that will I do. I will supervise, see to it, that because my name is upon it, I will make sure it is answered. That the Father may be glorified whatsoever you ask in my name chapter 16 verse 23 same john 16 verse 23 go ahead and read it is projected inside and outside one to read and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you uh -huh, whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it you the name of Jesus is the access code. Are we together? The attention of the Father is only attracted when any man stepping in the name, standing in the office, and upon the strength of that which Christ has done. The name of Jesus, a representation of his finished work and his legal standing before God, is the same basis we have. The Bible says, let us therefore come before him boldly. Access the throne of grace boldly. Not in our righteousness. Not based on our goodness. Are we together? But we stand upon the name. The name of Jesus is a representation of all that Christ did. The name of Jesus reminds the Father of the revelation of what Jesus did. Which is a revelation of his love for man. Listen. You will never get anything from God based on your self-righteousness. It's got to be the law of petition is that you must stand in the righteousness of Christ to be heard. Because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we come in His name. 
not based on our qualification are we together we are going to pray and say father i make these petitions tonight as touching your righteousness as touching your love as touching your willingness to answer me let to make petitions in the realm of the spirit imagine yourself standing in a law court give us isaiah 41 verse 21 listen to what the prophet teaches us about prayer isaiah 41 verse 21 please everyone please read one to go produce your cause say the lord bring forth your strong reasons say the king of Jacob. Why should the door be open to you? Bring forth your strong reason. The prayer of lamentation only gives you a psychological consolation. But I assure you it will not touch heaven. Every challenge in your life is the accuser's voice over your destiny. And if you are to speak, you are standing before that court of justice. Your petition, on what ground should I be blessed? Father, your word says, if I am willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land. Lord, I am willing and have been obedient to your principles. Therefore, I deserve to eat the good of the land. I place a demand on the strength of this reality. That's how to pray. You don't pray emotional prayer. You don't stand on stage and speak opinions and talk nonsense. The only thing that challenges the voice of the accuser is the word of God which is a testament of his will show me why God must give you a child show me why God must give you a child are we together show me why God must give you a job show me why God must give you a husband because I'm beautiful it's not in the Bible are we together it's in your brain but it's not in the Bible. Show me why witchcraft must stop attacking my family. Bring forth your strong reasons. Let me show you one more.